Hey, this is Brush64 Guy, and today we're going to be addressing uh, improving Wi Fi in a house. And so, what I'm going to be doing is installing this ceiling mount uh, Wi Fi access point. Uh, this is actually made by a company called Ubiquity, and it runs off of power over Ethernet. So, all I have to do is run the Ethernet cable and use a power injector, and I don't have to run a separate power line or locate it near a power outlet. So without further ado, let's get started and I'll show you the process. I want the access point located centrally in this space so that it looks balanced when walking up the stairs or down the hallway. To find the center, measure the distance across the opening and the width of the hallway. Mark the location for the access point's mounting plate. By marking the halfway point on each side, Using those marks to mark the halfway point across the opening will give me the point I need. To determine where the cable needs to run in the attic, I measure the distance from a landmark such as the attic opening to the point I just marked so that I can transfer it to the attic. I had already broken this up, so a little easier. We'll get that foam out of there. There's the pipe going up through the floorboard and you can see these cables are tucked in just along the gaps, you know, round pipe going through a square hole so there's some gaps. To fish the line from the garage to the attic I'm going to use some twine onto which I've attached some of this bead, uh, bead chain. And I also have this magnet. So what's going to happen is this is going to get dropped from the attic down. I'm going to measure this out to about 10 feet so I know when I'm about 8 feet, which is the height of the ceiling. Then I'm going to push this up into the opening near the pipe in hopes of grabbing onto the beads and then pulling them down through, which lets me get the string through. And then I will be able to attach that to the cable and pull the cable up. All right, so in the attic, lots of fiberglass insulation in here, so I'm gonna use some protection because I don't wanna breathe in this stuff. So just zooming out a bit, you can see it's a raised ranch, so you've got the steadily declining height from the slope of the roof. You've got these nice nails that are poking through. So raise your head too high. And I uh, get stabbed in the head with no flooring over here. It does make it easier to route wire, but you also take a chance of falling through the ceiling. So you can see I've got some just scraps of wood and uh, just a old lid there, just so I'm not actually laying on the fiberglass. Okay, so this is definitely not easy because I'm in a very cramped space, so I do apologize. I'll try and show you the gap here that I'm trying to drop this into. I don't know if you can hear the tinking of the beads against the pipe. It's one advantage of having an older house with the copper. So I think that's down. This is about 10 feet there. So that's where it's dangling, so I know I'm hitting the bottom. All right, so let's go downstairs and see if we can get it. Well, this was a pleasant surprise. 
the bead actually came through the opening. Which means I all I have to do is pull this and I've got the string. Now, if it didn't, this is where you go up into that pathway and you could then basically fish it out. You would kind of just gently try to snag it. You can see here how it grabs and then you pull it down through the opening and get this same result. I got lucky here in that it had already fallen through. So now we pull and there's our string. Tie the string securely around the cable. I find looping it a couple times adds some level of comfort for me. Next, wrap some tape around the connector to help secure the string and protect the connector and locking tab from damage as it is pulled through the passage. Gently feed the cable and string into the passage. Shift the other cables around to squeeze it in there. Use patience to avoid damaging anything. Back in the attic, measure from the landmark to the proposed location of the access point. Once the cable is fished into the attic, gently pull enough cable to reach the location of the access point. In my case, the plywood was screwed down. Unscrew the panel to be able to feed the cable underneath. should have gloves on for this. Inspect the location to ensure there are no wires or obstacles which could impede the mounting hardware or cable installation. The access point has two mounting options. The first is a plate with long machine screws and nuts which are geared for a ceiling tile and the second is for drywall installation which is the standard wall anchors and screws. Adding some additional marks enables me to ensure the mounting plate will be properly rotated. Yes, I wanted the logo and the access point to not be crooked. Next, mark the holes for the mounting plate using a pencil. Per the manufacturer's instructions, drill holes for the screw anchors. In this case, a 6mm drill is needed. I used a 15 ths which is only a few thousandths different. I used the same drill to carve out a larger hole that would fit the end of the ethernet cable. I started with four holes and then gently dragged the bit to merge them together. Gently tap the plastic wall anchors into each mounting hole. Sometimes they can be pushed all the way in without a hammer. Secure the mounting plate with the supplied screws. If you use a power screwdriver like I am here, be sure to either send them home by hand or set the driver to a very low torque to avoid stripping out the anchors. Okay, so now we're back at the ceiling. Let's lift this out of the way. Peekaboo, there are the anchors. 
There's the hole. Took our cable in here. Now we're a little tight. Use cable management devices to dress the cable along the route. In my case, I routed the cable along the wall, behind the oil tank, and through the wall into the water meter closet. Let's start by running it behind the pipe. The last step is to get it behind the paneling. I'm going to try that with a fish tape from the port in the paneling and see if I can get it back here without having to take the paneling down. I'll extend the fish tape about two to three feet longer than the distance from the jack to the wall. There's foam insulation back here. I'm trying to see if I can get it behind the foam against the concrete. I'm just gonna pull the pull the paneling. Remove the protective tape, inspect the connector for any damage, and plug into the power over ethernet injector. Now it is time to connect the access point. I had previously plugged it in and configured it using the provided software, so it's ready to go. Once the LED indicator turns solid blue and my phone says it is online via Wi-Fi, I know we are good to go. Plug the hole with some insulation to prevent drafts and critter intrusion. I replaced the foam insulation with some regular fiberglass because that's what I had available. So for now, I've just screwed the plate back in. I uh, kind of just left it loose so that the wire comes out underneath it. Um, I'm going to wait because I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. I may relocate the desk or relocate 
um, some stuff around the basement. So until I figure that out, um, it doesn't make sense to finish this. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Here are some screenshots of a Wi-Fi analyzer app taken in one of the bedrooms and near the TV. Strength higher than minus 70 decibels should be good enough for reliable connections. Lastly, I ran a speed test to ensure I am getting good download and upload speeds from the access point. That looks pretty good to me. All right, well, we checked another project off the list. I have fun doing these projects and sharing what I do, my techniques with you. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and I'll share more with you. I am looking forward to doing more videos this year. It's one of my New Year's resolutions. I've got a lot of projects on the list, so let's see what we can do. Uh, if you have ideas or suggestions of projects you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. Again, thank you for watching. This is Par64Guy. See you later.